hey everyone welcome to my channel today in this video i'm going to critically analyze this novel pride and prejudice along with its summary and main characters now let's get started about the author jean austen was an english novelist in which and and she was best known for her witty social commentary and insightful portrayal of the lives and manners of the English upper middle class families in the late 18th and early 19th century. Um, she is considered one of the most important and influential writers in the history of English literature. Moreover, Austen was born in Steventon, Hampshire, England into a very you know close-knit family and therefore she began writing and at a very early age and her literary talents were nurtured nurtured within her family circle so a majority of her works are um, you must have heard about sense and sensibility pride and prejudice mansfield park emma and northanger abbey and persuasion so these are the novels which are well uh, well known for their well drawn characters and the very intricate pl plots and exploration of themes such as love marriages and love and marriages and social class and the uh, role of women in um, in a society so um austen's novels actually were published anonymously uh, during her lifetime and she achieved moderate a success as an author however her works gained wider recognition and popularity in the 19th century and today she is celebrated as a literary icon her writing um, continues to captivate readers with its timeless themes sharp wit and engaging storyline Moreover, um, Jane Austen's novels have been adopted into numerous films and television series and stage plays, um, causing further cementing her legacy. Now come to the language and writing style. Okay, um, the very first characteristic of her language and writing style is that her tone is very much satirical and ironic tone and austin employs a, a satirical tone throughout the novel using humor and wit to critique the social customs norms and behaviors of the upper middle class society um, which he portrays so this tone adds depth and entertainment to the narrative the second very characteristics are her dialogues um, austin's dialogue is one of her strength she skillfully crafts conversation between characters often laden with subtle nuances and subtext uh, the dialogues actually reveals the characters personalities motivations and social dynamics providing insights into the society in which they exist um, the third characteristic is free indirect speech you know austin employs the technique of free indirect speech um, which allows the narrator's voice to merge with the thoughts and perspective um, of the novels of the characters um, and the characters so this technique provides an intimate and subjective view about the characters inner thought and emotions and feelings and uh, which enhances the reader's understanding and connection to the state story um, the fourth a fourth characteristic is vivid description and setting you must have uh, if you have read her novels that you must have noticed that all her description of settings are detailed and vivid and which enables the readers to envision the physical environment in which the characters interact so these descriptions though not very excessive uh, but it definitely it definitely contribute to the overall atmosphere and the mood of the story the fourth um, um sorry the fifth the fifth characteristic is social realism yeah, and this is the very core of her writing style that austin's present a very realistic portrayal of social his hierarchy custom and expectations of region re regency era england and she dwells into themes such as social class marriages gender roles 
um, and uh, manner and customs and exposing uh, such team allow her to expose the intricacies of society with astute observation though if you look at this theme from the perspective of postmodern literature and the very characteristic provided by the theorist of postmodern literature then you would definitely have an issue with this with this characteristic that because postmodern uh, theorists as you know that they think that realist fiction were not completely realist fiction and they definitely have a major issue with austin's fiction as well but if we analyze this novel in the context of 19th century then and in the context of realist fiction then we can say that her major theme is social realism okay um the other characteristic is the uh, balanced narration uh, the narrative voice uh, remains authoritative but doesn't overshadow the characters um, to, the st uh, to the story mm, because Austin maintains a very balanced narrative perspective uh, presenting events and character characters objectively while offering subtle commentary. The other uh, feature of her characteristic uh, of her writing style is the economy of language because Austin prose is concise and precise and employing a clarity and elegance that enhances readability. She avoids unnecessary verbosity and focusing on essential details and secondly conveying her ideas. I think I'm done with all of this. Okay, subtle character development. Um, Austin's character development is nuanced and gradual. Uh, though their interaction dialogues and inter internal monologues and readers gain a deep understanding of the characters growth and growth and transformation and the motivations okay now come to the other part the summary along with the character so in this part i'm going to explain the summary and meanwhile i'll also tell you a little bit detail about the characters as well so let's get started Okay, the story starts with Mr. and Mrs. Bennett and they have five daughters. So, Mrs. Bennett is uh, um, portrayed as a very silly woman, silly woman who, uh, that kind of auntie who is obsessed with getting her daughters married as soon as possible and she doesn't seem very much educated. However, her husband, Mr. Bennett, is a very philosophical man and uh, he often seen as um contemplating with various thoughts um even the very first line of the novel which very which is a very famous dialogue is also um uttered by mr bennett and uh, which is um it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in a want of wife and this dialogue is a very theme of the novel and I will explain this dialogue in the very second part of the video in which I will explain the themes and symbols. So till now let's focus on the summary. Okay so Mr. Bennett has five daughters. Jean is the eldest one and she is the most beautiful one. Then comes Elizabeth who is the smartest one though not as pretty as Jane but she is also pretty and she is also the protagonist. Elizabeth is the protagonist. Third one is Mary Bennett. She is the educated one who loves to read a lot and lot of books and she spends uh, most of her time re by reading books and giving morality lessons to others. The fourth one is Catherine Bennett, also known as Kitty. The youngest one is Lydia Bennett. She is the most favorite of Mrs. Bennett. So the story takes a, a twist when in their neighborhood comes the unsettled uh, young bachelor whose name is Mr. Charles Bingley. So Bingley settles in Netherfield estate. He's a rich man and he has two sisters. His one sister is married while the second one whose name is Caroline, Caroline is unmarried. So when Mrs. Bennett comes to know about Bingley, she wants one her one of her daughter to daughters to get married with Mr. Bingley. So the other main character is um, Darcy, Darcy who is Bingley's uh, best friend and he comes to visit his friend for some time. Darcy is most is more rich than Bingley but he's very proudy and very snob snobbish uh, character. 
okay uh, then comes a scene when so the villagers arrange a very small gathering kind of party within a village and everybody is invited even miss even mrs uh, even miss uh, even the bennett family also also visits the party and also the bingley family is also there and dorsey is also invited so in this party uh, when bingley sees jane who is the eldest daughter of mr bennett and mrs bennett so when he in this party when Miss Bingley sees Jane, he gets really really attracted to her. He even proposes her to dance with her, and they both uh, look lovely together. Because Mrs. Bennet also feels exuberant inside because at least her one daughter is attracting a wealthy suitor. So later in the in the party, Bingley says to Darcy that why he's sitting idle and he should also dance with. Uh, Jean's younger sister Elizabeth but Darcy rejects this idea and depicts his snobbish attitude by saying that Elizabeth is not something extraordinary looking she's just ordinary but unfortunately unfortunately Elizabeth overhears this conversation of Bingley and Darcy and she develops a prejudice against Darcy in her heart so the main title of the novel actually points toward Towards, towards the pride of Darcy and prejudice of Elizabeth. Um, okay, then come another scene in which the two sisters of Bingley all also like Jane a lot. So as their sister-in-law, um, they invite Jane to their house. So Jane decides to visit them with Elizabeth. But when they are visiting them, rain starts. So rain starts. So the two sisters have to prolong their stay in Netherfield st estate one week more. So meanwhile, Jane and Bingley got really get really attracted to each other. But later on, Darcy starts to get attracted to Elizabeth a little bit than before. But the problem here is Bingley's unmarried sister, Caroline, who doesn't like Elizabeth why? Because she likes Darcy already. Caroline notices that Darcy is attractive to Elizabeth. Fine. So, then there comes a new character in the story. Um, whose, name, whose name is Mr. Collins. So, he's the heir of Bennett's property. Because as you know, at the time in England, at that time in England, in 19th century, there was a rule that daughter, daughters cannot get the property of their parents. So, since Bennett family has only five daughters with no brother, so they cannot inherit any property of their parents. Therefore, Mr. Collins therefore proposes Elizabeth for marriage. Elizabeth, however, rejects his proposal several times. Then, Mr. Collins informs Mrs. Bennet that Lady Catherine, a patroness of his another estate, has instructed him to marry and that he plans to choose a wife from the Bennet Bennett sister, from the Bennet's daughter. So Mr. Colin choose, chooses Elizabeth but he is offended when she refuses him. He quickly turns his attention to Elizabeth's friend, Charlotte Lucas who wants to marry for security rather than love and the two are soon engaged and married okay. mm, then comes the villain of the novel George Wickham so um, George Wickham is, Wickham is actually is an officer in local military and he's very handsome and as Darcy grows more interested in Elizabeth Elizabeth continues to despise him and he's instead attracted to George Wickham. Uh, Wickham tells Elizabeth that his father worked for Darcy's father and that he and Darcy grew up together. He also states that he was favored by Darcy's father. So Wickham claims that Darcy disobeyed his father's bequest of a clergyman revenue to Wickham out of selfish resentment. Okay, Wickham, uh, Wickham's tale uh, makes Darcy appears not only proud but also cruel. 
in the eyes of Elizabeth and Elizabeth accepts Wickham's story without any doubt and disliking Darcy even more because of it. So the story then takes a sharp turn when Jane gets a letter from Bingley uh, from Bingley's sister uh, that uh, and Jane finds out that Bingley and the entire neither he field party have unexpectedly left for London. Caroline Bingley writes to Jane that they do not intend to return and she pre predicts a match between Bingley and Darcy's sister Georgiana who is also in London. Although um, Jane uh, quietly resigns herself to a life without Bingley but Elizabeth is angry for her sister and suspects that Bingley's sisters and Dan Darcy are trying to keep him away from Jane. Then, story then moves forward when Elizabeth visits Charlotte at her new home in Hunsford, Kent and meet, uh, and meet Mrs. Collins' patroness, and, which is Lady Catherine, and Darcy's aunt, Lady Catherine. Soon after Lady Elizabeth, uh, soon after Elizabeth's arrival in Kent, Darcy also visits his, visits his aunt. So Darcy puzzles um, Elizabeth with his behavior. He seems um, to seek out her, her company. One day he surprises Elizabeth by proposing to her. Elizabeth is, you know, very much prejudiced against Darcy. So. She is repelled by his pride and believing Darcy is responsible for Bingley's separation from Jane and for Wickham's misfortune. So she uh, rejects his proposal. Fine, uh, Darcy uh, refuses him. The next day, Darcy gives her a letter explaining his role in influencing Bingley's away from Jane and details the fact of Wickham's situation. So after a careful examination of the facts, Reveal that Darcy, while proud, is innocent of wrongdoing. So, Elizabeth comes to know that she was actually prejudiced against Darcy. So, after that, Darcy writes in the letter that he has no relation with Bingley's disconnection with Jane and he dislikes Wickham because he is a very cruel man who tries to elope with Darcy's 15-year-old sister, Georgiana. After that, after a few days uh, later, um, aunt and uncle of Elizabeth, Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner, visits Bannard's family and takes Elizabeth with him to Pemberley House for refreshment. Uh, Darcy at that time was also uh, visiting Pemberley House, Pemberley House. So meanwhile, Elizabeth receives two letters from Jane telling her that Lydia has eloped with Wickham causing Elizabeth and gardeners to leave for home immediately. Elizabeth fears that Lydia and the Bennet family are permanently disgraced. When Lydia is found, however, she and became Mary. After the wedding, wedding, Elizabeth discovers that actually Darcy pays Wickham to marry Lydia, thereby saving the reputation and marriageability of the other Bennet's sister, Bennet's daughter. Because earlier, Wickham has rejected to marry Lydia after eloping with her. So, you know, eventually, Bingley returns to Netherfield and soon asks Jane to marry him. And Jane, of course, of course, accepts this proposal. Darcy also proposes again and this time Elizabeth happily accepts and everybody lives happily ever after. So this is the um, analysis, but uh, as far as the themes and the symbols of the um, novels are concerned, I'll explore that part in the second part of the video. Fine. So bye-bye till then.